We made it. Fact number 31. Joseph sets up the Council of Fifty to bring forth the kingdom of God on earth to usher in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Joseph plans for the saints to live among the Native Americans. He also plans to overthrow the American government with the aid of the Native Americans. He, Joseph Smith, believed that a theocratic democracy where the people chose to live in harmony with God's laws could establish a just and peaceful society to prepare the world for the second coming. But if his campaign were to fail, that's his presidential campaign, and the oppressed and downtrodden were left unprotected, he wanted to establish a place to protect them in the last days, somewhere outside of the United States. Constant threats in Missouri and Illinois, along with the ever-increasing number of saints, had lately prompted Joseph to look westward for such a place. He did not intend to abandon Nauvoo, but he expected the church to grow beyond what the city could accommodate. Joseph wanted to find a place where the saints could establish the kingdom of God on earth and institute just laws that would govern the Lord's people into the millennium. With this in mind, Joseph thought of places like California, Oregon, and Texas, all of which were then outside the borders of the United States. Send out a delegation and investigate the locations, he directed the Twelve. Find a good location where we can remove after the temple is completed and build a city in a day and have a government of our own in a healthy climate. On March 10th and 11th, the prophet formed a new council of men that would oversee the establishment of the Lord's kingdom on earth. The council came to be known as the Council of the Kingdom of God or the Council of Fifty. Joseph wanted vigorous debate in the council and encouraged its members to speak their minds and say what is in their hearts. Before adjourning their first meeting, council members spoke enthusiastically about creating a government of their own under a new constitution that reflected the mind of God. They believed it would serve as a standard to the people and fulfill Isaiah's prophecy that the Lord would establish an ensign to the nations to gather his children together in the last days. Amid the turmoil of the spring, Joseph met regularly with the Council of Fifty to discuss the ideal attributes of a theocratic democracy and the laws and practices that governed it. At one meeting shortly after the April conference, the council voted to receive Joseph as prophet, priest, and king. The men had no political authority, so the motion had no temporal consequences, but it affirmed Joseph's priesthood offices and responsibilities as head of the Lord's earthly kingdom prior to the second coming. It also alluded to John the Revelator's testimony that Christ had made righteous saints, kings, and priests unto God giving added meaning to the Savior's title, King of Kings. Elder George Albert Smith offered a motion to adjourn, which was overruled. Elder Erastus Snow arose to repeat the expression of Elder George J. Adams the other evening, for he feels this to be the happiest moment he ever enjoyed. He feels as though his soul expanded every time we meet. We have never realized the strength and power of the simple expressions in the Book of Doctrine and Covenants. Be patient, for I am laying the foundation of a great work. It may yet be said that we are still laying the foundation of a great work, and I am happy that I have the privilege of associating with our beloved prophet and the members of this council, and pray that I may live as long as Moses. He said he never rejoiced as much as he did to this day when President Joseph was making his remarks. He concluded by offering a motion that this honorable assembly receive this time, henceforth and forever, Joseph Smith as our prophet, priest, and king, and uphold him in that capacity in which God has anointed him. The motion was seconded and accepted unanimously. In another meeting, when Joseph finished speaking, he accidentally snapped the ruler in half, to the surprise of everyone in the room. As the ruler was broken in the hands of our chairman, Brigham Young quipped and said, so might every tyrannical government be broken before us. Elder Rigdon arose to give some reasons for the course he had taken in relation to this last kingdom, that the last order of heaven, this last order of government, that will ever take place. He is well aware that there are some things necessary to enable any man, however competent to realize that the importance of this subject 
there are certain things necessary to be observed to the highest light and evidence that we have. One question is settled, that is, that the earth is fast approaching its desolation. There were things in relation to this world that must approximate to the crisis now approaching. There never has been an organization, no odds by whom, or organized, of a government, whether monarchical, aristocratic, or republican, that was adapted to the wants of the community at large. If there ever had been such, it would have been on earth at this day. The organization of this government is an anomaly, brought into existence to accomplish a something which no other government ever did. He understood the great Jehovah to be the God of the whole earth, its founder and author, and he never would rest until he had accomplished his purpose in relation to it. The nations of the earth are fast approximating to an utter ruin and overthrow. All the efforts the nations are making will only tend to hasten on the final doom of the world and bring it to its final issue. All the various inventions and specimens of the ingenuity of man, although calculated to increase happiness of men, will tend to hasten on the approaching desolations of the earth. Elder George J. Adams wished to make a few remarks on two or three subjects. He believed that the kingdom of God that has here been organized will hold jurisdiction over 50 times as far as the church, so far as the world is concerned. He considers that this organization is designed to break down tyranny and oppression all over the world. He relates an antidote concerning his being shipwrecked. The establishment of the Church of God was a stepping stone to the establishment of the Kingdom of God, and in its organization, individuals had been called who were not members of the Church, and he considered this a great argument in favor of the Kingdom having influence over the nations of the earth. In another meeting, the chairman, Brigham Young, stated that Brother Dana is the first of the Lamanites who has been admitted to this Kingdom. The object of this organization is to find a place where we can dwell in peace and lift up the standard of liberty. It is for the purpose of uniting the Lamanites and sowing the seeds of the gospel among them. They will receive it in mass. The Gentiles have rejected the gospel, i.e. fulfilling a prophecy, and will carry it to the branch of the house of Israel in the west. I want to go and convert the Lamanites and dwell with them and I believe in 20 years the land will be divided off to the Lamanites and they will have the privilege of going to visit the graves of their fathers. The Gentiles will yet be glad to lick the dust of the feet of the Lamanites to get their favor and we shall live to see it. I will tell you in the name of the Lord, so this is Brigham Young prophesying in the name of the Lord, when we go from here, Nauvoo, Illinois, we will exalt the standard of liberty and make our own laws. When we go from here, we don't calculate to go under any government of God. There are millions of Lamanites who, when they understand the law of God and the designs of the gospel, are perfectly capable of using up these United States. They will walk through them and lay them waste from east to west. In a little while, when the nations are agitating themselves with strife and powers that will be rise up against themselves, and the slaves will rise up against their masters. This is referencing the Civil War prophecy that Joseph Smith had. And then will the red men come out of their hiding places and go forth to waste and destroy with fire and pestilence. The present mission is one of the most important missions ever undertaken.